now to our correspondent, Regini Vardenadon, who is in Las Vegas. And why did he do it? That is the question everybody wants to know the answer to. And still, the police seem to have no answers. That's right. Investigators are, of course, continuing to search for a motive. Now, part of their focus remains at the Mandalay Bay Hotel, as well as recovering a huge number of weapons from Stephen Paddock's room. Um, police say that they found a computer and possibly a hard drive belonging to him, so they are now searching that for possible clues. FBI teams are also continuing their search of Stephen Paddock's home in nearby Mesquite, as well as another property that he owned in Reno, Nevada, which is at the other end of this state. Now, of course, Sophie, Las Vegas is a city known for its par party atmosphere and its energy. But last night, the bright lights of the Las Vegas Strip went dark as hundreds of people gathered for a vigil in honour of the victims. It was a number, one of a number of vigils which took place across the city. I attended another one at City Hall where I met a nurse named John. Now, John was off duty on Sunday night, but when he got the call, he went straight to the hospital where he treated dozens of victims. And even though they're prepared for these kind of traumas, he said the sort of injuries that he saw came nothing close to anything that he had ever witnessed. Now, unfortunately, I've covered a number of mass shootings here in the United States. And what I'm always struck by is the resilience that communities have in the face of these tragedies. I'll give you an example of that resilience, Sophie. John, the nurse that I just mentioned now, worked through the night treating people despite the fact that he lost his own friends in the attack here at Mandalay Bay. Regini, thank you.